once you have cleaned up your character, then you can actually resubmit it to get a better grade on assignment two. Or even if you already like the grade you got, you, got, you can resubmit it just to improve your portfolio at the end of the semester. So there's lots of reasons to do that. I'm going to just burn down some of these really bright edges. And then I'm just looking at everything and seeing if there's things I want to trim. Like that dark shape behind the white there. Some of these edges. Just so it, it makes it work better when I bring it in to my landscape. All right, now, how do I resubmit it? I first save it for myself. Remember, Command S saves it to where you brought it in. So that's going to update my Photoshop file right there. This was my old PNG. This is what I had. Now I want to save it again with the background turned off as a PNG to resubmit because maybe it got two out of three points because it just wasn't very clean. It needed a little refinement and in the comments I could see what those refinements needed to be. And I could keep working on it. You know, good digital art takes time. It takes focus. I need to eat away from this tail a little bit more with this soft edged eraser. But let's say, okay, that's, that's the best I can do. So I'm ready to submit it. So first make sure you save it as a PSD. So you have it. And then you're going to turn off your background. And then you're going to say file export as a PNG with the background turned off. This will make it like a really high quality sticker. Highest quality. It's going to go to your downloads and it's actually going to be the exact same name as this PNG so if I want to keep both of them and I might as well like to show my process I want to open it in my downloads wait till it's done still processing and then just give it a slightly different name like maybe put a 2 at the end of it because you can't have two files of the same digital format and the same name in the same place or one has to replace the other right so now this is orange this one's older so this one's yellow okay now i go to canvas it's just a couple steps to this to get a new grade and i go to the home page and i can shortcut by going right to assignments and go right to where we post assignment two. And I tell you these directions in your comments as well. But to resubmit, I find my original post and I do not erase anything because remember you need the sketch in your post to get full credit. So when you resubmit, leave your, your original posts, leave any process posts. This is the one I submitted and then got a score on, and I wanted to improve that score. So I click on these three dots, I edit it, and I do not delete anything. Instead, I just add to the bottom a resubmission. So I'm going to label it resubmission. It means it's after the deadline. And it should have clear improvements. And I'm always happy to give you credit points for work that you do. You just got to let me know that you did it. So once that comes in, I'll scale it so it fits a little better. It's a little big. All of these are a little big. And we have a nice example of the project. 
So that's my resubmission. And I consider this an improvement on what I had done, especially around the neck of the creature. Okay, but I'm not done yet because I need to let the instructor know that I resubmitted it. So how do I do that? I go to the class inbox. I find, I create a new message. I find this course, which is number six, Arch234806. And then you can type in my last name or my first name. I'll pop up. And then you're going to say resubmission of assignment to that's it once I get that email or that message like you see I can already have some from my first class after demonstrating this now I will see that email and I or that message and I will only respond to it once I've gone in looked at it and rescored your work and I'll thank you for your resubmission I'll tell you that I got it and then you can see how it affects your grade, right? So what kind of things help? Like these internal edges on the ears, little gaps, hard edges, little fragments that were left scattered around it. All of those got improved and kind of smoothed out and basically brought to a the same level of finish throughout. And that makes it so now I can use this in my proving ground. So how do we do that? Now we go to the proving ground first by going to our landscape, assignment one, and finding our highest quality landscape, which is going to be our PSD for the project. My PSD still needs some work, right? Another thing I can use improvement, but the first thing I can do for this assignment is I can crop it, use my guides to find what the edges of it would be. And I'm just going to go ahead and crop it. I'm not going to overwrite assignment one. I'm going to name it something else for my creature scape. Oh, but I'm in Photoshop. I should be doing this in Photo P. So let me just save it as something else and then open it in Photo P. So when you open it in Photo P, you're then going to crop it and save it again, not as assignment one, save as, but as proving ground one. And you should have your name in it. And I'm going to save it to the desktop as a PSD so that now there it is I can create a new folder within my class folder that's for this new type of assignment where we apply what we've learned proving ground number one now I'm working on this and I'm done with assignment two now I open up photo P I can close this. Make sure it's saved, but it should be saved. I can always just reopen Photo P in a new browser because I'm now going to bring in my landscape file with a new name. It's got all the layers, even layers that are turned off right now. And I open that up. Then I'm going to take the PNG of assignment two, not the PSD, the finished, most, you know, best cleaned up thing that I submitted to Canvas. Because it will come in as a clean sticker that way. It will come in on top of whatever layer I was selected on. And that means that it's near the bottom here. I'm going to bring it toward the top. 
and I can keep I can use command right bracket to move it all the way on the top there it is so that shows me in real pixels how big my creature is within my landscape pixel dimensions and I can use the move tool now and I can move it around so I have an idea of how big my creature is but I'm going to duplicate this it's a smart layer and I'm going to try some different scales so I'm going to do control T and I'm going to make it really big and I can kind of put it in the foreground but that doesn't look all that good or I can make it really big and use command left bracket or just move it down through the layers and put it in the background I can even put it in the sky I now have it behind the beat sun turn off auto select here All right Ooh, like a kaiju I can flip it control T right click flip horizontally position it in I can of course move it up through the layers so that would be like the big version of my creature and it can be good to test it out this way like if it was the big version where would it go so it might go right on the edge of that mushroom lake like that and I might orient it this way and it'd be peeking behind the celery tree or if I make it smaller maybe make it just a little bit bigger than this because I want your creature to take up like it says in the assignment uh, at least 25 percent of your composition and sometimes that means you need to crop your landscape okay but let's say I want to do it like right here or I could try flipping it this is all still a smart object I can try tilting it I want to think about where its uh, feet are going to be and I can try putting it behind these foreground elements and that kind of works but it hides a lot of its anatomy so let's see what's going to make sense I think I want to put it it's tricky I can also use it to kind of cover up parts of my composition I'm not as proud of so maybe like put it down here because it's that seam I got really rushed on right there and then move it behind this and then reveal a lot of it so I think this is going to be the placement I go with and that's around 25 that's a little bit more it's more like kind of 30 percent of my image it's okay if little parts of your creature get cropped off as long as it feels like it's showcasing the creature and I have to still decide do I want to have it facing that way or this way I think I like it facing this way better maybe tilt it up a little bit they don't need to worry about those back feet quite as much oh yeah that's good you can set it on that leaf right maybe move it a little it's a very busy landscape okay so let's say I put it there for now so that's just the placement that's hard for me to decide let's see yeah I think I want the tail showing so that's going to be my placement now we're going to learn how to adjust its lighting to make it match so to look at this I'm going to save it here so command s and we're going to see what the requirements are of the proving ground in the next video so we can understand what we're trying to do to pull this illusion off.